semiconductor used everywhere from your toaster to your iPhone to your smartphone to your car anything you use today electronic gadget has semiconductor semiconductor used in industry semiconductor is used in military complex everywhere in the world so in modern days it is impossible to think that your life can go without semiconductor. So, what happened in my life? How did I get involved in semiconductor? Let me tell you a little my, my life story. I graduated from Buet and I left the country. Never worked in Bangladesh in my life. When I went to United States, I went to the university and I, saw, I realized that I'm not prepared to work in the semiconductor industry. Buet did not teach enough courses. So we had to study hard. We had to learn new things, take a lot of courses. And I end up joining advanced micro devices in Silicon Valley, California as a design engineer. I worked at AMD almost 11 plus years and many startups, many other companies in Silicon Valley. Only four countries in Asia took advantage of the first stage of semiconductor, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and Singapore. Later on, in the manufacturing side, Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia. No other countries in Asia took advantage of that. In 90s, there's a big change in the world. Semiconductor moved big time in Bangalore other part of India. Now India produces almost 30% of the semiconductor chips. And then China, you know the China story, how far China has come, but everything happened since 90s. So I was in Silicon Valley. We were hopelessly watching what is going on in the world. We talked to almost all Bangladesh government because semiconductor is such an industry. Government has to patronize. Government has to finance those industry. It, the so first barrier I found that it's very difficult to convince the government, very difficult to educate the government. Awareness is almost nil in Bangladesh. So I'm going, coming back and forth and trying to convince and it was never been easy. So what I did is I packed my wonderful life in United States just packed my bag and moved to Bangladesh in 2007. Uh, that was a very crazy idea, I tell you. If I look back, you know, I'm, I'll be scared today. So when I moved here, I start my company 2007 with four engineers. Without any sight, future in sight. So no encouragement. So I say, why not try? Actually, I definitely raised my wife because she encouraged me uh, a lot. She was a doctor there. She was practicing in the USA and she decided to quit her like a $250,000, $300,000 job and decided to come with me, accompany me. And my children were born in USA. I had to send them to school in Aga Khan school and Dhaka, you know, AISD and all those places. And it's a big adjustment for the family and such a crazy idea. So I came to Bangladesh, started with four engineers. But unfortunately, I cannot get any business. And then to make things worse, 2008, all the recession, worldwide recession started. There's absolutely no, some, no customer. 2007, I got a customer. But that customer went out of business. I was able to do some job. But then 2008, 9, it was a horrible time. I moved here. There is no customer. There is no income. I'm burning my money like hell. It is a very stressful time. It was not an easy time. Nobody will be supporting you when you are in a difficult time. Okay? But what get me going? That's the story I want to tell you guys. I checked very thing in the Silicon Valley, the semiconductor growth. Semiconductor started first with, you know, this computers, then network, then all other application is coming out. So many applications popping out these days, you know, medical electronics, Everything, security chips, you name it, everywhere the chips are there. So as chips, um, you know, uh, is used in a big time, so there is a uh, demand for the people who, who worked on this industry. 
And at some point, United States realized that you cannot have all the, all the job in USA, so they had to outsource in different countries. And guess what? Bangladesh is the eighth largest populous country in the world. It's huge, younger population, you know, Gen Z. You guys all know about Gen Z, right? As, as a matter of fact, I have almost 200 engineers are from Gen Z. So if you train those people right away, and somehow we can be part of the ecosystem, I think we'll get to business. That's not how I was thinking. But there's, if there's no business, how can you continue that? To be honestly speaking, I went through a very depressing time. And at some point, honestly speaking, around 2009, I was about to quit. I thought that okay, so I tried, it didn't work. Let's give up. So I was also having a second thought that if I give up that today, it will be difficult to rebuild what I have already built so far. So what I did is basically I, I decided to hang around. I continuously training my engineers. I had four to eight engineers, then I had to let some people go. It became four engineers. And then in 2010, very interesting thing happened. A US company, a big company, they were having financial trouble. They have almost 2,000 engineers in India. They decided to explore three countries, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam. And first exploration, they came to Bangladesh, and we happened to be the only game in town. So we talk, we discuss. That company happened to be AMD. I worked there, but I didn't know the guy who came from Austin, Texas. Anyway, uh, to make story short, we started our small journey with that company. Uh, with four engineers, all, that's all I had. Uh, now I have almost 40 engineers working for only that company. So after 2010-11, I didn't have to look back. Uh, as you, revenue started coming, because you know I don't want to go the technical detail, but you know chip design is a very complex, which is uh, there are sweet spot in the business. We try to identify those areas first. We focus uh, that one because that's a few shot. You'll get some money, some revenue coming in. If you don't have cash flow, you are a history, definitely. So it's very important. And just to let you know, I did not take any loan. I did not take any investment from anybody. It's completely my money because. I can only gamble my own money. I don't want to take money from my friend. There are people who wanted to give me money. I said, no, I don't want to touch your money because I'm not sure whether I'll succeed. If I'm not sure, why should I take your money? That's, a, that's not the right thing to do. As we start building one company after another, we gradually start building our business. It is difficult initially. As we start proving ourselves, the barrier is gradually going away. Uh, we have right now more than 20 international. We have no customer in Bangladesh. We don't talk to anybody in Bangladesh. We start with four engineers. We have four offices in the four different locations in the world. We have an uh, office in Silicon Valley. Almost 40 engineers work there. We have almost 35 to 40 engineers in Toronto, Canada. We have an office in Ottawa, Canada. We call it Kanata suburb of uh, Ottawa, and then we have an office in Bangalore, India, and of course we have an office in Dhaka. So today we have almost 480 engineers. We are almost approaching 500 engineers. We, our goal, we are the largest engineering employer in Bangladesh, and we are planning to reach to 1,000 engineers. So keep your aim high. Now what happened? As we started growing, definitely our challenge is growing. But we are willing to take all the challenges. Initially when I said, you know, with this low hanging fruit, we started with a little bit older technology. As time goes by, we also came to the top technology in the world. We become, as if you guys know about semiconductor, TSMC is number one in the world in Taiwan. Okay, we become Design Center Alliance of T TSMC. TSMC only qualified 21 company in the entire planet Earth. We are one of them. If you go to TSMC website, actually 
on 18th, I have a meeting with, in Taiwan. I'm going to Taiwan. I'm going to meet them. So we have access to the most advanced technology in the world. Now, guess what? There's a company called Apple. Have you guys heard about Apple? Everybody's iPhone, right? I got a strange call from Apple. I couldn't believe it. it's a trillion dollar company calling me. What's wrong with this guy? They said that, can you come and give me a presentation about your company? I said, wow. I was in Dhaka, actually. So I called my CEO. He's in Cupertino, California. Can you go to Apple, please? They're asking for a presentation. He was very serious. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, I'm serious. Apple wants to talk to us. So he went and gave a presentation. It was very serious. They did not let him present for even five minutes. They said, stop your presentation. I'm not even interested about your presentation. How many FinFET, they call it FinFET, very advanced technology. How many FinFET engineers you have? He was shocked. We have here in Dhaka. But normally, we do work for different customers. We are not supposed to talk about it. It's a very confidential agreement. We have certain area in our office. Nobody is allowed to enter. Even our employee cannot go with their mobile phone. It's a very secure area. Their, their body search. Because no technology can leave Bangladesh. No technology can leave that room. We have to do very certain work. So somehow they are desperately looking for those FinFET engineers worldwide cannot find enough to do their project. That's the story. How did they find my name? They will never tell me. Somehow they found it. They don't want to talk about it. So uh, Dr. Mizan, who's our CEO, he said that you, know, you need to talk to him because he's asking for how many engineers. So I called him. I said, what's going on? He said, I said, how many engineers you need? He said, how many you have? I said, wow, what he's talking about. Anyway, to make story short, we start with two engineers. We have now 40 plus engineers work for Apple. And all those engineers came from Bangladesh. They're not even Buet students. You'd be surprised. We trained them. We gave them confidence. So one of the things, what we are finding right now, creating resources. So I actually listened to your speech. One of the things you were saying that this is my background. I did computer science. You program yourself in such a way that you cannot get out of it. We are telling people in future, you fast forward another five years, 10 years, AI is coming. It will be difficult to draw a line between different subjects. I just uh, went and talked to both electrical engineers, uh, Ruet, uh, both the computer science and told them that the electrical engineer must know programming very well and the, the computer science guy understand hardware very well. So you decide your future. So what I'm doing these days, I don't go and try to hire a school graduate, university graduate. I go to the first year. And, and my next step, there are three step process. Short term, mid term, long term. Because let me tell you, semiconductor market today is 600 to 700 billion dollar. In, in 2030, this is going to be one to 1.2 trillion dollar market. And this is such a big growth. I think entire world needs probably another 30% resources. Every country, including USA, I'm hiring in USA, I'm hiring in India, it's very difficult to find people. So what we realized that I'm actually going to all universities in Bangladesh. We created a blog and now complain, we don't have faculty, we don't have these, we don't have that, definitely. I said that there's no, there's no end of list of complaints, okay? Even I was surprised, I don't know if anybody from Ruet here. Ruet do not have your cadence tool, surprise. So what we are doing is, we are telling all the students from first year, I said that in my, we are creating a blog. We are doing category of four to five categories of engineers we want to hire. Top of that, what we are doing, we are telling them, look, this is the future. You fast forward the five years, 10 years, job market will be very different. You have to be creative. First, I tell them, you try to find your passion. You try to discover yourself, all the faculty, because you have to find your comfort zone. So what we are telling them, that semiconductor industry is not for everybody. 
but regardless of what you want to do in your career you make an in informed decision this degree centric thought process is going to go away people will judge you what is in your dna what you can do what you can produce pure and simple i look at people's eye and see whether he can do that believe me i hired psychologist in my company to evaluate before you even hire them because we suffered a lot in last 16 17 years people do good acting so the problem is right now what we are teaching them we are going to university and we are doing a lot of blog if you go to ulkasemi blog go to youtube you'll find a lot of things there and we are continuously developing we are telling that if you are interested i don't care whether you're physics major or economics major or chemistry major or what the hell major i don't care if you study first of all think anybody can study anything anybody can learn anything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give in your dna you got to explore yourself you will find your comfort zone don't stuck with the courses offered by different university university is going through a difficult time because you know it's difficult to offer new courses and get in budget get faculty train the faculty is long story i know all those things so we are telling them that as a student you study you take a test i don't care about your degree you will be hired so we just recently hired physics major almost 20 right 20 50 i tell them you take a test surprisingly i gave them very inspirational speech before the test and some of them did amazingly good i think like i said my 450 engineers almost 200 engineers are gen z and they have full of energy i'm actually learning so much from them believe me i'm having a lot of fun with them creativity working with them brainstorming listen to them not agreeing not disagree all those things actually give a lot of energy to you i am also telling that we need we should go back to primary school and teach children math and science and problem solving this is very important things we have a huge population dividend this is a blessing for us we should do our part to take advantage of that in that way bangladesh will be one of the top country in terms of technology there are a lot of talents here there is no shortage of talents we cannot utilize them the way we want to samantir ekta gaan ache ami oti sadharan naam chhara porichoy ar kono nai jar ami shei tomader kono ekjon thank you very much